Greetings, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. And today we're going to do part two of the uh, good solid look that we are getting of the, uh, the RigPi station server here. Uh, this is what I'm going to use to do it. Uh, we're going to just look at steps. Uh, no, no background, we did that yesterday. Okay, here is the power cable. Here is the power supply. Uh, viewers have told me you can get these uh, Raspberry Pi uh, power supplies a lot less expensively on the internet for around $10. Uh, so we've got the Rig Pi server, this, the power supply. I'm going to be using these headphones on the computer. These are computer headphones, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is power up the uh, Raspberry Pi. So we'll go ahead and plug uh, the power in here. Okay. And this. But before we do that, we want the thing to boot as though it sees a display. So we're going to take from over here, this is the display lead going to my second monitor, which is an HD monitor. And I'm going to just put that in there so that when this boots, uh, we will have the thing thinking it's talking to an HDMI monitor. So let's go ahead now and plug it in. And we can see on the side over here that uh, it's going through a boot routine. We're going to uh, turn on the monitor over here and point this over here at the screen. Okay, this is the screen that uh, uh, we're looking at. So it's the full size screen over there. Now let me put this down just a minute because now I can disconnect this. Okay, now we're going to um, connect in the um, the two important leads right here. This is uh, the green is the internet, okay, and the USB goes down here, and that's all we need to do with that first. What we want to do first is look at the Raspberry Pi through the eyes of the computer. And we're going to use something called VNC. Okay, let's go looking for VNC. Uh, first of all, I'm going to start recording this screen down here. All right, the first thing we're going to do is bring up this program called VNC. Um, and it's easiest to do it from right here from the search bar, VNC Viewer, okay? This is the app that we have in mind. Now, um, so it was 123 last time, there we go. Okay, what we're looking at here is the Raspberry Pi's uh, screen. Now, we want to go up here in the corner, there's a little speaker control, okay, and we're gonna left click on it and change that to USB audio codec okay USB and then we're going to go into the mumble server into configure settings and you know I don't know why it can't seem to remember this from one session to the next it should okay the system up here we're going to come down to um, well, let's go uh, pull up a web browser here. Um, and, okay, we've pulled up a web browser, and we're going to do rigpi.local. Okay, K-E zero OG sign in okay this is what we're seeing here settings um, basic radio Yesu FTDX 5000 okay this here you have 
uh, just a couple ports you can choose from. Um, and this one over here, uh, you've got the TTY, so it seems to be the right one. Now we're going to, oh, you know, it would help to turn the radio on. Let's do it again now. The radio's on. Okay, we're connected. All right. Now let's uh, go back over here that we've got the radio connected. There we go. Okay, now we've got a whole bunch of devices here. And we want the USB audio default audio device right there. Okay, and this, uh, we can do voice activity or we can do continuous. Uh, let's do push to talk, okay. All right. Um, then on the audio output, we need to do the same. Uh, USB audio default audio device okay now we're gonna click apply and okay and just make sure this one up here yep USB audio codec okay, I'm gonna minimize that and now we're gonna go back to um, this VNC connect what it does is allow you to see the screen of the Raspberry Pi. Note that I had to connect my um, um, my HDMI monitor to it so it would set itself up properly. Um, very uh, frustrating. Let's see if it has any preferences. No, nothing that looks applicable. Okay, we're going to leave that connected by the way. Okay, let's go here to where we have our uh, radio all right the radio is connected down here okay and we can look at some of the screens in here uh, well first let's get the audio uh, working let's uh, come over here and bring up mumble 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 Okay, uh, connect, and um, then we don't want to send a message. Um, the device array is here. Okay, now on the audio output speaker high definition. Okay, and we do have noise coming out of there. Okay. Hello. Now this right here, hello, 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 I'm transmitting. I'm looking over here and if I push the push the push to talk button I'm transmitting okay but I don't have any received audio yet so let's see what we can do about that it's again in the mumble client here and v2 we seem to be using the Pi Okay, I think this is supposed to be continuous. Yes, there we go. Okay, that's continuous. I'm now hearing the the audio, um, which I can control. Um, not from there. 
but from here it's computer audio okay Okay, let's uh, turn this uh, down. Now, if we tune a little off, this is our push to talk. Now, the thing is that uh, the uh, the rig uh, gives a little feedback in the headphones so you can hear it. This is KE0 OG testing. Okay, let's take a look at what we've got on the tuner page. You can select bands, modes. Uh, these are all uh, different macros that you can set up to do. Uh, you can connect and disconnect the radio, put memories into save and so on. You can operate split. Um, it says the radio is a 5,000. It's actually a 3,000. This right here, you can go see the, the little do, uh, lines that are under the and over the nine. If you change here, you will change um, by one kilohertz. If you want, you can put them over here and change by a tenth of a kilohertz. We'll take this one over here and get it down. And sometimes it's most convenient to do single sideband tuning at the kilohertz level because most people, um, if the bands aren't really crowded, will end up on a multiple of a, a kilohertz here. Um, so now there is a keyer in here. The keyer, uh, you can uh, type in CW here and it will transmit it. And there are again, all kinds of macros down here. Uh, for the pro signs and things like that. Plus you can set these up uh, the way you want to. There is a log builder where you can uh, set up this so that when it takes its log, it's in the format that you need to ingest into your computer logging program. The spots thing right here um, will give you, uh, th these are DX spots. Uh, the thing you've got to be aware of is, uh, okay, here's the DX. Looks like this person is self-spotting. So this guy in Poland can hear himself. That does not mean we're going to hear them. You often want to uh, look in here to see uh, who is hearing the spot. If it's somebody stateside, you might be able to hear it too. And this is the uh, band where these things are located. So uh, you can do things uh, to um, filter these uh, that you may want, okay? Now the web um, is basically QRZ. Uh, you can look up uh, a call sign, like if you're working somebody, um, you can uh, get the call sign and, and look at their QRZ page. Now you need a subscription on QRZ to do that, okay? Here's your basic settings, accounts. Um, we just have the one account, the basic radio. If you want to go into other things, you can do stuff that's a little bit more advanced. Uh, there is not really good um, uh, documentation of all of this, unfortunately. Uh, you can also connect a rotor. Um, and how that's connected, I don't know. I'm maybe a USB uh, keyer. You can set up your keyer, uh, the speed, uh, anything that you want. Okay, and um, uh, log designer. This is yeah how you how you set up your uh, log right here. This is the log over here, and this is the log designer. All right. Um, we talked about spots, um, the macros, you can set these up. And there's a language for them that you see here. Uh, frankly, I've not seen any documentation of this. 
And then there is the system itself, which will tell you uh, what your um, local IP address is, what the wide area network IP address is, and uh, different ports and stuff like that. Now, uh, now that we've finished all that, we've got audio in, we've got audio out, we've shown everything here um, that we can do, so we're just going to shut down the rig pie. Now, this is important that you shut down the rig pie from uh, here and don't just pull the plug. Uh, it's just like a regular Windows computer. Um, you want to shut it down in an orderly way. The Raspberry Pi likes to be shut down in an orderly way. So we'll go ahead and shut it down. And that's that. It works. Okay, so what we've done is we've just taken a quick step through the, um, uh, the RigPi server. I'm going to uh, leave in some of the little difficult uh, pieces there uh, to know that it, with persistence you can get around them. And I may add a little comment as I edit the video here. Okay, so uh, don't forget, please, to subscribe. That's very important to me that you subscribe. Uh, it doesn't really create any obligation on your part, and you won't get lots of notifications unless you uh, click the bell. And then you will get a notification of every new video. But uh, YouTube's uh, main figure of merit is the number of subscribers. So... Uh, also, don't forget the uh, page where you can help um, the finance this channel, uh, and that's at dcastlercom slash support. Uh, every little bit is welcome, a buck in the tip jar, whatever you'd like to do. And uh, thank you so much for your attention today, and until we next meet, and I believe the, we're coming up real quick on the new, uh, the new Step IR big IR vertical antenna is here and soon we will uh, temporarily take out my FTDX 3000 and put in place an ICOM 7610 and all that's coming real soon so stay tuned until we next meet 73